All right, everybody, and welcome back to another subscriber review where I review your gameplay and I give you guys some advice based on what I have seen and I'm pretty much going to react to your guys' gameplay. So this right here is somebody who's been playing for a couple days only. His KD is around a 0.86 and he just wants to improve and get better based on the feedback that I do give him. And if you are actually interested in me reviewing your gameplay, make sure you check the link down below in the description. All right, and we're playing on Hovik Sawmill. So this is something that's new. Maybe you guys will learn something from the advice that I give. Wait, hold on. What, what was this? I want to see what... Okay, so he's using the M4, which is a pretty good weapon. Obviously, the most popular one in the game. Pretty interesting. He's using an overkill setup. Now, just right off the bat, I would definitely switch out overkill and change that with Ghost. You know, in multiplayer, people are always spamming UAVs. The more they spam UAVs, the easier it is for them to find you. So just switch this out for Ghost. Tracker is a really good perk. I really like that one, especially if you're utilizing it correctly and flanking around the map, being sneaky, attacking the enemy from behind. Uh, double time. You know, that's not a bad one, you know, so if he's using this perk, I do expect to see some very aggressive gameplay and rushing around the map. But if you're not that kind of player, then there's no use in using double time. You might as well use something like EOD, which is more useful in helping you keep alive against explosives. And we all know how OP that is. Well, anyways, let's go ahead and watch his gameplay. I just want to put my input on his class setup here. So he's using the M4 with the stock M16 barrel. Not really sure what else the other attachments are, but, uh, you know, let's just review his gameplay as we go here. By the way, guys, if you guys like this series, make sure you show some love. Drop a like on this video. Let's try to hit a like of 500 likes. It'll show me that this is the kind of content you want to continue to see. Oh, geez, I have my Twitch notifications on. Hold on, guys. <laughs> Let me go ahead and turn that off. I actually do stream on Twitch as well. Link down below in the description if you're interested. All right, so right off the bat, the first thing that I do notice is that he could definitely turn off world motion blur. And for some reason, the gameplay is like really choppy. I don't know what's going on. Maybe he's got the wrong settings on his PC. You know, I personally don't play on PC, so I wouldn't know exactly what to change. But uh, it looks like he could turn off wor world motion blur. Because when you turn off world motion blur... When you turn around so sporadically, it's really hard for you to see enemies around you. Okay, that was a really great challenge. I like the fact that he felt confident enough to do that. All right, he did not need to use his stim shot in that situation. I feel like that was a waste in my opinion. He could have just uh, sat there for a moment and let himself heal manually. Or not manually, but automatically. Someone's coming up to his left. You know, I really like the fact that he's staying stealthy. He's not rushing around the map aimlessly. Yes, he did hear this opponent's footsteps, so he's following the footsteps accordingly, which is exactly why I do recommend using the tracker perk. 100% that enemy probably heard him. I think there's another guy around here right, right there behind him. Good kill. I'm looking at that medium map. Dude, this guy's doing an excellent job of staying away from his teammates and flanking around the map. All right, so in this situation... Let, let me let me just give you some insight on why I say flank around the map because some of you guys may be wondering what do you mean by flanking around the map when I say flank around the map it means stay away from your teammates because the theory is that when you stay away from your teammates and you flank and flank also means stick to the outskirts of the map you do want to go the opposite way of your teammates because the more you do that, the more chances that you have of coming up against some enemies who are unsuspecting and do not expect you to be there. It's all about the element of surprise. So let's back up here and see what happened here and why he died in this situation. Keep in mind, not every situation that you die, I can offer advice on because, you know, if you die, it's simply because you either got outplayed or you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But let's see what we can do here. So he takes out this guy. And I think he's using a monolithic suppressor, so that's good. So he's staying stealthy as possible. So he comes into here. All right, so he momentarily takes a look at what's going on in this building before he actually decides to rush, which is really good. All right. Okay, so in this situation, he had the right idea. I think he wanted to get high ground, so I commend him for that. Now, there really just wasn't much that he could have done in this situation because he already had his gun up. You know, the only thing I would say is like maybe approach the ramp a little bit more cautiously instead of being caught in a double sprint. That's why having that double time could possibly put you in a bad situation because you're most likely going to want to double sprint pretty much everywhere you go. 
So as you can see, like the dude was already expecting him up. He probably heard his footsteps as he was sprinting up the ramp. And that's why he was caught in a situation where his gun is up and he's as a result is going to lose this gunfight. And that's pretty much the result of that, you know. You know, he didn't really do many things wrong in that situation. Okay, looks like... Okay, I think he's going to stick with his M4 setup. Yeah, he didn't do anything really wrong in that situation. It was just a matter of the movement mechanic, you know. When you're going up ramps and you're especially by yourself in a different part of the map where your teammates are not, you're most likely going to come across enemies, which I've said before in the past. So you have to be a little bit more mindful, a little bit more cautious when you're going into new areas. So you got to take that one step further and just be a little bit more safe. So in this situation, when you turn around this corner, always pre-aim into new areas or lines of sight where you feel there might be enemies. So I, I always like to say, always assume there's going to be an enemy around every corner. So let's take a look at this again. Yeah, see, it was already too late. So this dude was already here. He already saw him. So once you turn around this corner, before you turn around this corner, matter of fact, you want to aim down sight. Yo, to celebrate 100,000 subscribers, I'm officially announcing my first ever merch drop is now available between July 9th to July 19th. You got 10 days to cop this exclusive merch. This is a limited drop and will never be seen again. If you've been rocking with me for the longest or you just became a huge supporter, take your allegiance to Turbo Nation one step further and represent by grabbing you a Turbo Nation tee, hoodie, crew neck, available in all sizes, different colors. And as a thank you, I will personally shout you out if you take a picture with my merch on and tag me either on Twitter, Instagram, or Discord. Cop it now before you never see it again. You don't have to dramatically aim down sides, you know, while you're walking around the corners. You just wanna quickly glance. You gotta pre-aim and that's why he lost that gunfight. You definitely could have won that gunfight if you had pre-aimed around that corner. All right, so now he's switching to the AUG, and now he's switching back to the M4. All right, teammate just died right in front of him. Yeah, he could have pre-aimed a little bit sooner. Like, these small little fundamentals, you know, it's something that comes within time, time and experience, you know. I think, okay, that was a good kill. But it could have been cleaned up a little bit more by pre-aiming. There you go. That was a good kill. That's just another good example right there of just pre-aiming around corners. Like, I don't know how many times I've already said this already, but that is definitely something that's sticking out to me in this Not user's right particular here. gameplay. All right. Pre-aim. You got to pre-aim around those corners, man. Even coming into this new area. All right. So... Let's let's take a look. Let's take a look back here. What happened in this situation? Right here. I wanna I wanna take a deeper look into this. All right, so you know, there's no teammates directly in front of him. Only the guy right here, and there's one small little guy over there, but you can barely see him. All right, so he's coming around this corner. So as he's turning around this corner, he's not really checking his left. Anytime you want to move from point A to point B, and it involves crossing a line of sight. You have to be mindful of that as well. So if you're going to go from this corner uh, and you're, you want to move to this location, it would be the smarter idea to actually go in through here and not really go out through here because you put yourself more at risk to getting shot, if that makes sense. See, in this situation, how he crosses outside of this little uh, shaded area here, he should have went inside of the shaded area. You got to use objects to your advantage so that it helps you stay alive regardless if you see an enemy or not. You know, it's better safe than sorry, and that's the result of that right there. I do see that he has some... He has some field upgrades ready. I'm not really sure what they are. All right, so he's pre-aiming. He's going to keep moving. I would definitely pre-aim around this corner again. I think, I think he's rushing way too hard. You got to slow your game down just a little bit. Yeah. That's really what it is. You're rushing way too hard. Slow your game down a little bit and you'll be able to stand a chance more in those gunfights. There you go. See what happens when you pre-aim. You're you're more you're more patient. It pays off well. You know and I get that. You know you're playing a shooter. You want to get as many kills as you possibly can. You know you're eager beaver in it. You know, you, but but if you truly want to do well in modern warfare, you have to play a little bit slower and a little bit smarter, more methodical. That was a great kill, by the way. There's footsteps I could hear. Follow those footprints. Get that kill. 
Now, it would be a good idea to turn around right now, bro. Turn around right now, please. Okay. Let's back it up here. The reason why I was cheering him on to turn around is because look at where his location is. He's literally in the enemy area. Now, we don't see enemies here, but there's a higher percentage chance that there are enemies in this area. So every time you kill an enemy and you're alone, best believe their teammates are going to notice that off the minimap as well as just knowing that their teammate died. They could be communicating through comms that, hey, somebody just killed me. So, you know, you don't want to stay in the same spot every time you kill somebody. You always want to be on the move. That's why I say turn around, get ready for the next gunfight because somebody might be right behind them. Uh, yes, there was an enemy here, but it wasn't really the best move in that particular situation. I think, at, see, like, somebody, I heard, I heard gunfire. Did you guys hear that? Let's listen to that again. Watch, listen. Right there. It, and it came from the left side, so that means that there was an enemy nearby. Alright. So he didn't get that kill, but unfortunately, we, we didn't get to see how that played out. If there, you know, was an enemy going to come up through. But I'm pretty sure there was. And that's just tough right there, you know, coming out of the spawn, you get spawn killed. That's tough, man. There's really nothing you can do about that. All right, teammate just died right in front of him. Okay, now that the VTOL is actually up, I just realized this now. You got to take cover. Just be patient. Take cover. Oh, jeez. They just called in another kill streak here. Sounds like a chopper gunner. Or enemy support helo, I think. Yeah, just take cover. Go. Yeah, do not go out. You're literally just going to get yourself killed. Yeah. <clears throat> like, the game is still early on. There's still five minutes left in the game. You're only down by 17 right now. There's still a chance that you guys can still win this game. You don't have to go out there and rush and get kills and just put yourself at risk to dying to those kill streaks. You're just helping the team win the game a little bit more. Yeah, you just got to slow your game down. Pre-aim around those corners, slow your game down a little bit more, be more patient. I would not even challenge that, by the way. Hey, but hey, more power to you. He got it down. Good job. Maybe his teammates were shooting it earlier in the game or earlier on. Bro, the enemy team is just pouring kill streaks on these guys. Yeah, at this point, you just got to take cover, man. There's really nothing you can do when they got all these kill streaks out there. All right, so now that the kill streak... Oh, man, his teammates just left the game. Yeah, you guys got to play a little bit more cautious now. You guys got to play a little bit more on the defensive side. It's pretty obvious that the enemy team is on the offensive right now. The best way to counter offensive players is play a little bit more defensive. So try to position yourself away from your teammates. That's where all the enemies are going to right now. They're feeding off of your guys' kills. If you bunch up with your teammates, you're only helping their cause. You're making it easier for them to kill you. If you have dead silence, I would definitely pop that. Yeah, you're getting popped from different directions now. Um, yeah, this is a tough situation, but I really do commend you for staying into the, in this game regardless. And you're not leaving the games like some of your teammates have. So there's gunfight going on over here right in front of you. Yeah, you got double team right there in that situation. Really nothing you can do right there, man. I would... Honestly, I would not try to challenge, you know, multiple enemies at a time in this situation. All right, let me just pause it right here. Hold on. Good kill, by the way. If this was me in this situation and my team was getting absolutely destroyed, I would still stick to my guns and just flank around the map, keep utilizing my strategy, because what my main goal is as a solo player is to try to get my kill streaks, because kill streaks are going to help your team out immensely. It's going to apply pressure to the enemy team. And it's definitely going to help you guys out because if you guys shift that momentum, you're more likely going to win that match or at least help you stand a chance. I mean, I do understand you guys are down by almost 30 at this point. But, you know, individually, if you're playing solo, uh, you know, that's the best thing that you can do in that situation. Yeah, you got to play a little bit more cautiously at this point, man. Can't just run around expecting to get a lot of kills. And that, I think that VTOL is up in the air. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, dude, the enemy team is just pouring the kill streaks on you guys at this point. Yeah, the game is pretty much almost over. 
you might as well just camp it out, you know, take cover. That way it'll prevent getting more deaths on your record rather than trying to, you know, fight a lost cause at this point. Yeah, they got two more. I do like the effort of trying to take those kill streaks down, though. I really like that a lot. So uh, let's take a look at his final score here and we'll give him some final st uh, final thoughts. All right, so he... Yo, what? Wait, hold up. Dude, guys, am I seeing this right? Wait, he got 12 kills and 53 deaths. He died 53 times? Uh, hold up. I feel like I was just so focused on giving him advice that I didn't even realize he died that many times. That can't be right. That cannot be right. Okay, oh my gosh. I was like, wait, no way. No way that was possible. But anyways, so he got 12 kills and 22 deaths. So 0.55 ratio. Almost lines up with his average KD. Now, my final thought is like, you know, he has he has the right idea of staying away from his teammates. You know, I really like that. So you're doing a good job at that. The only thing that I would definitely advise for you to do in the future is be a little bit more patient. Patience is key. Out of all the sub reviews that I've done, that is one of the most important advices that I've given consistently. And that's a very common mistake that I see a lot of players doing. Like I was saying earlier, I get it. You want to play fast. You want to get a lot of kills. But, you know, at the same time, it's at the cost of your KD. And also, it doesn't help out your team as well. So, Modern Warfare, you got to play strategical. You got to play a little bit more passive. Change up your perks as well. Because when you're faced off against an enemy team and you're playing solo, you want to be as stealthy as possible. Because you don't have your teammates giving you call outs, saying where people are. You know, you're not as free to play as recklessly as you want so change out overkill for ghost i didn't see you use your aug at all so that was kind of pretty much pointless so change overkill for ghost and swap out your double time for eod slow down your gameplay pre-aim around those corners always assume there's going to be an enemy there and just be a little bit more cautious when you're going into buildings as well take that one extra step to be more cautious and always assume there's going to be an extra enemy in that room even if you didn't initially see enemies in the building uh, but yeah, guys, that about wraps it up for today's episode of Sub Review Gameplay. Hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to show some love on this video because like I said, you know, this series is just for you guys. You know, I could be posting a million different things, but it seems that you guys really enjoy watching me review other people's gameplays. So make sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you are new around here for more Call of Duty content. Feel free to check out all of my other videos. And by the way, if you have not yet checked out my merch, it's a limited drop right now represent turbo nation there are different colors for everybody different sizes different types of merch we got hoodies shirts we also even got face masks as well so definitely check that out link below in the description if you love the channel you want to take that support to the next level that would really mean a lot to me so yeah guys i will see you guys in the next video have a good day peace